Hey guys, how's it going? Douglas Gutierrez here with Select Premier Properties. I've been getting a numerous amount of requests to do a video for Cuba um, my, from my wife's friends to my current clients and past clients. So I figure instead of doing another real estate video, I come at you with uh, how our trip was to Cuba and how easy it is to travel. So how to travel to Cuba. For us, it was extremely easy. We actually flew through Mexico because we stopped in Cancun before, but I had confirmation of a couple we met from New York that we met at a local club, and they said it was extremely easy. The same way we traveled there was the same way that they traveled there. So to start off with, first you have to get immigration cards, but this is only if you're traveling to Mexico through Mexico. Because we're US citizens traveling via Mexico, we did have to get what's called immigration cards. Very simple, they fill out the information, they give you a stamp, and you have your immigration card. Next, what you have to do is a visa. Everyone has to get a visa in order to travel to Cuba. Visas cost anywhere between $20 to $80. Ours only cost $20 because we bought it at the airport, but I've seen online that it costs around 80 bucks, uh, you know, maybe a little bit more. Uh, just keep in mind, you do have to buy your flight before you go. So I know it's a big risk buying a flight and then figuring out a visa and all that, but that's just the process. So if you want, you can go to the airport. I recommend getting there three hours early. It just makes it so much more simpler um, to have everything relaxed and, and easy. The, uh, there's a little guy or girl that comes up to you and gives you a visa. You pay him $20 cash, you fill out your visa form, and that's it. And you're off to Cuba. Really is that simple. As far as airport and traveling goes, if you're flying out of a, a U.S. airport, you know, make sure you look up how early you have to be there and all that good stuff. Uh, for us, we had to be there three hours early was the recommended time. And if you are flying out of San Diego, be sure to use what's called the CBX. It just makes it so much easier if you want to fly out of TJ because you can park on the US side and you walk into a building that is the terminal and you just pay $15 to go across and you're already in the airport. So a little side note, if you're in San Diego and you are flying international, whether it's to Cuba, Brazil, uh, you know, Colombia, wherever you go, check out this, the, the flights out of TJ. It's a very simple airport to get through. Uh, it has a lot of English too for those of you who don't speak Spanish. And you can go through the CBX and it makes it extremely easy. But not only that, you do save a lot of money. So, you know, take advantage of what we have to offer here in San Diego because there is a lot to offer. So that, that's it for traveling. I mean, I'm not going to really touch much on that because it really is that simple. The only other thing I can say is definitely take extra uh, an extra luggage so you can put all your souvenirs and everything inside of there. Also recommend to eat. Um, if you're in, if, when you're coming home from Cuba, the airport doesn't have a lot of food options. It very has very small options. So I encourage you to eat before you go because it just makes it so much more uh, convenient for you because you know you're there three hours early and then you have to go and do all kinds of stuff. So also another note: make sure you have cash leaving Cuba. They charge you twenty-five dollars as a tax to leave. It's not per person it's for the group so make sure that you do have a little extra cash to to pay the tax to leave speaking of cash here is the Cuban money it's called CUC or Cuban convertible peso um, it's actually really cool because it makes it very easy to easy to budget because one US dollar equals one Cuban dollar so it makes it very simple on the budget but it's not so simple when converting money. When you convert money, they charge you 15% as a tax. So you do lose money if you go from US to Cuban dollars. So for us, at that time in November of 2017, it was easier for us to convert US dollars to euros, travel with the euros, and then convert the euros into Cuban pesos at the Cuban airport. They uh, took it, I believe it was anywhere between 115 to 120. Um, so it was real nice. We actually made some money going out there, which, you know, it's awesome. Free money going on vacation. Um, so make sure you do your research and figure out whether it's pounds, whether it's Canadian dollars, whether it's euros, whichever is more convenient for you at the time of your travel. Um, as far as budgeting goes, budgeting was very, very simple. Uh, we, we budgeted for $60 a day, which was plenty. I mean, for 
20 to 40 dollars you can buy dinner you can go out you can buy souvenirs uh, we never reached our 60 dollar a day budget so it was it was uh, awesome on that far as far as um, spending money in cuba uh, things to do while you're there in cuba there are so many things to do from the Malikon, which is a, a hangout spot. And if, for those of you who don't know what that is, it's the place where the water hits the wall. And it was very famous on the Fast and the Furious uh, when Vin Diesel was racing in the Cuba scene. Uh, Friday nights, Saturday nights, weekends, that was awesome to go to. So it was um, extremely uh, nice to, you know, meet the locals and to go out and do all that stuff. Also tours. I don't recommend you buy your tour online or buy your tour before you get there because it seems just about everyone's a tour guide or people you meet they give you recommendations on taxi drivers to take you um, for example we went to Varadero Beach which is about three hours east of the island and um, it was it was nice it was a small beach town it had a uh, white sand beaches uh, clear water uh, for us that tour was about a hundred and twenty dollars we took um, the recommendation from Yamil, and Yamil was our uh, hostess. So at Airbnb, um, we booked her, and her name was Ama Cuba. So we booked her through Airbnb. We stayed there for about seven nights, which was only two hundred dollars. So was it very expensive? She also offered breakfast. Uh, she offered dinner. Breakfast was only five dollars a day uh, per person, and also dinner was an, an additional five dollars. Per person so that was nice but what I really liked about Yamil's house not only is it centrally located in Havana but pretty much everything in Havana is centrally located to everything but she had her mom that lived there and her mom was amazing she lived pre-revolution and post-revolution so she talked about history she talked about what Fidel did for everyone it, it was really cool you know we have a painted picture of who Fidel is and what he's done um, but you know talking to the people they absolutely love him and they loved what he brought I mean he brought uh, free health care he brought uh, free education for all grades so you know make sure you definitely talk to the locals if you do end up decide to go to Cuba and speaking of that you can stay at a hotel I don't really recommend it uh, what I do recommend is staying with the local Everyone, well, mostly everyone has what's called Casa Particulares, which you can um, stay in their house. It's just like their version of an Airbnb. Um, if you want, you can book an Airbnb in advance and you can read all the reviews and, and check it out. But, you know, if, if not, you can really do everything on the fly there in Cuba, which makes it really, really cool. Uh, especially you know the traveling another place we went to as far as traveling we went to a place called Vinales Vinales was about one to two hours west of the island and it was extremely beautiful it had uh, tobacco farms it was very green it had a little town that you can actually stay at uh, if I can go back to Cuba uh, which I, hopefully I plan on going back because it was really that nice but I would break up my time in staying. Like I would stay maybe three or four days in Havana. I would stay two days in uh, Varadero Beach. And I also stay maybe one or two days in uh, Vinales because it was really that amazing and there's so much to do. Uh, in Vinales, you can actually tour a cigar farm and you can get all the information on how they make cigars. Uh, we actually bought some cigars for there. So if you decide to go to Vinales and buy cigars, they wrap them in what's called a banana leaf and it does pass through customs. So make sure you tell them it has to be wrapped in a banana leaf. I really like the cigars over there because it didn't have the nicotine. They take out the whole entire, from what he explained, they take out the whole entire uh, vein of the nicotine. And it's really a nice organic um, cigar. So we went to a small little little farm and they showed us the whole process. And at the end you get to smoke a cigar with them. So that one was really cool. On behalf of cigars, I know everyone wants to talk about cigars. They want to talk about uh, Cuban cigars. Um, we bought this nice little box here. We bought a Cohiba uh, cigars. We bought about 25 of them. And uh, you can buy them really anywhere. A lot of people are selling cigars. Personally, I recommend you buy them either at a hotel that's government regulated or you can buy them at a cigar factory. Now, the average cost of a cigar is maybe individually anywhere from 10 to $20 depending on where you at, or you can buy them by the box. The, in the box, they come between 24 to 26, and it costs anywhere between $230 to about 
$300 just depending on the cigar, the type of box. Um, I prefer the hotel because in the government hotel they come with all the seals so you can have everything um, regulated for when you cross customs. As far as bringing back souvenirs, I know everyone loves to bring back souvenirs. Make sure you do your research as far as what you can bring back. During the time we went, the .gov website says you are allowed to bring as much tobacco or alcohol for personal use. So yes, we did bring back cigars and we brought back some rum. So this rum, you can buy it actually at the airport or you can buy it at you know hotels or, uh, I didn't really see them at little corner stores. They had other types of, of alcohol there, but this particular Havana Club rum is actually my preferred rum. I, I drank it all while I was there. Um, as far as rum goes, I don't know if you know this, but Cuba actually um, was the originator of Bacardi. Bacardi was actually there in Cuba before they relocated to Puerto Rico. But um, also, um, at going back to the rum, they make a drink called a Cuba Libre, which is rum, coke, and lime. It was amazing. I mean, pretty much everywhere, it was, it was anywhere between $2 to $3 a drink, which, you know, as going back to the budgeting, you can kind of get an idea of how inexpensive it really was. Um, this one was my favorite. There was also, um, it's kind of cool because only one company controls everything, which was kind of cool because you didn't have four different types of beers and five different types of Cokes. It was just one Coke, one Sprite, one type of water, and you know, you have your three or four types of rums from the different competing companies. But other than that, that's was really cool. Um, the nightlife though, the nightlife was extremely awesome. Everywhere you go is a nightlife. So you can be eating at a restaurant and as soon as a certain time hits, the band starts playing, people get up and start dancing. One of our favorite restaurants was called La Guardia. And what I really liked about that is that if you go during sunset, you can go on the top and there's a bar up there. So you can watch all the sunset, you can have a couple drinks and you can get ready for the nightlife. Um, there were so many options to choose from as far as the nightlife, but we went to a place called La Frabica are, and that was amazing. Sorry, my Spanish isn't really that great, so I definitely gonna post um, you know the names in the description. But La Fabrica was awesome. It's a big warehouse, and they had a carnival style where out front they had people on stilts playing uh, music. Inside they had all types of paintings, so it was really a modern way to go out. And and they also had bars. They had DJs. One level was rock. You turn the corner, it's rap. Uh, you turn the other corner, it's Spanish. So. That one was really cool. Also, another place to go to in the nightlife was called Fantasy. Fantasy Nightclub, you won't find it, so I can't post up a, a link because it was real underground. Either the hostess or the um, taxi driver recommended to go there. We left La Frabica and um, he was like, hey, are you guys done? Do you want to go out somewhere else? And we're like, no, where can we go? And he's like, well, I know a, a place called uh, Fantasy Nightclub and only locals go there. And uh, it's kind of true because when, the next day we talked to Yamil and we said, hey, she's like, hey, did you guys go to La Fabrica? We went there and we like, yeah, we ended up at this place called Fantasy. And she was like, oh, I never heard of it. And, um, it, you know, it makes sense because we tried to take pictures and videos and the security guards grabbed the phones, deleted it. So it's really local and, um, you know, very, very underground. Even outside, the security guards were telling you to be quiet because you can't. Um, talk so so that was cool and then I and not only that but it ended at 6 a.m. So that was really cool uh, another thing that was so great about Cuba is that it's just stuck in the in the in the 50s and um, But what I mean by that is it has kids playing outside um, People are outside communicating talking not everyone's on their phone speaking of phone before I forget um Wi-Fi cards. That's the only way to use the internet unless you pay T-Mobile the $2 a megabyte or $2 a minute. That's really the only way to to uh, to get internet is through the Wi-Fi cards and it wasn't really hard to spot. You have a bunch of people just sitting in a park on their phone or at Plaza Vieja on their phone and um, you know when you're there you just say hey, you know where to get a Wi-Fi card and 
you know, they point you in the direction, it looks something like this, you can get them for 30 minutes, you can get them for an hour, and they range anywhere from $1 to $2. So it was really inexpensive, but once you leave that little place, your phone service cuts off again. So that was kind of cool to not have phone and just to see people out there. Um, there was also people on the corner selling coffees. They had another person walking, selling bread uh, down the street. So that was really cool. So it was it was really nice. The food um, was okay. Uh, they sell a lot of pizza. So the pizza, it, it, for those who don't eat lobster or uh, you know just want rice and beans every day, you can get hamburgers. You can get pizza. It's all made you know from their local food, so it's not going to taste exactly what U.S. stuff tastes like. But it is um, you know good, especially Guardia. The Guardia was probably our favorite restaurant. There was also another restaurant called La Petrola. And La Petrola was uh, in Plaza Vieja. And just, I don't know if I explained what Plaza Vieja is, but it's a little town. It's like the old plaza. And that's where the cruise ship docks. And that's where really all the tourists go. And they stay there at Plaza Vieja. But they also have, like I said, the Wi-Fi. They have restaurants. They have um, street performers. They have places where you can buy souvenirs. And uh, my wife got her hair braided there. So there was a lot of things to do there. And on the weekend, they also have a swap meet there. So that one was really cool to check out. Uh, also, in Cuba, you know, there was a lot of restrictions. I know everyone wants to talk about, uh, you know, they're communist and socialist. And there was restrictions, you know, like you wouldn't want to take photos inside grocery stores or anything like that. Um, but there was be maybe 40 50 people in line and you know what are you standing there waiting for and they would tell you know we need our toilet papers and speaking of toiletries highly encourage you to take an extra suitcase and in that extra suitcase you can take maybe baby wipes you can take toilet paper amazon also sells these little circle i don't know how to, how to explain it but it's like a circle tube and you put it in water and it expands to um a wet nap so that way you can you can have toiletries because not a lot of um, places have toilet paper some places didn't have toilet seats so you know I definitely encourage you to take that and and if you have extra stuff you can just leave it with your host they love getting things I mean when I was there I gave out some hats my wife gave out some some clothes to a bunch of people so it was real cool they love gifts they love everything um, as far as um, getting sick I didn't really get sick um, from anything, but what we did take was medicine. So I would encourage you to maybe take some aspirin, um, take, I, I don't know the name of them, but they're like little motion p um, pills, but they, they're for, for enzymes in your stomach. So that way, you know, because you're eating another type of food, you don't really get sick. So um, also that not to drink the water. I know that's pretty common, but you know, you can, uh, you can't really take water, but you know, at the local stores, you can buy sealed bottles of water. So you can take that and carry it around with you. So it really comes in handy when you have that extra suitcase. That's pretty much it. As far as Cuba, I talked to you about, um, traveling. I talked to you about places to go to, um, things at the airport, a lot of little things that there's stuff out there in Cuba. So, um, you know, I encourage you to go and check it out. So that's my video on how to travel to Cuba. I really hope you like it. Uh, don't forget to follow me on Instagram at Real Estate by DJ. Like me on Facebook and to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Also, if you end up going to Cuba and I miss something, definitely reach out to me and let me know so that way I can go check it out. Uh, that's it for now. Goodbye, San Diego, and until next time.